Hey, Dan and Amy, and I'm very excited about our next guest, Eli Steele. He is a documentarian. He is the son of uh, one of America's great intellectuals, Shelby Steele, who I've mentioned on this show often, the author uh, of Every such, day. Well, when we talk about identity politics yeah. and uh, racial politics, you have to mention Shelby Steele and his work, including White Guilt, uh, which I, I find to be his seminal work. But um, Eli Steele uh, is uh, contributing to the conversation in his own right. And his uh, film, How Jack Became Black, How Jack Became Black dot com is where you can get more information on it. I've seen it. It's excellent. It's uh, a really a conversation for this time. Uh, and it's, it focuses on his kids. Jack is his son. Mm -hmm. Jack and June are his two kids. They are black, white, Jewish, Mexican. So and Native it, American too. Uh, so which box do they fit in? Oh, no. Well, I hate those boxes. And this is the story of uh, Eli trying to enroll his son Jack in the LA school district. Uh, and and here's one of the provocative questions that Eli Steele poses in his documentary. You see ways to identify people is poison, and it's always done in the name of good. How can identity politics cure centuries of poison with more poison? How can identity politics cure cure? How can identity politics cure centuries of poison with more poison? We're pleased to be joined by documentarian Eli Steele. Now, Eli, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, can we get volume up on on Eli? Uh, Okay. All right. And so, um, so Eli, give us just, you know, kind of uh, develop the, the premise of the documentary, which is you trying to enroll Jack in school. Yes. And that was the, um, the situation that began the whole um, idea of, uh, of this documentary. Um, you know, I just went to enroll in him, like any parent in America. And I was, you know, the application is the primary race. Pick one. And so, you know, Jack being of multiple races, how was I able to pick from that rich history and reduce him down to one race? And what was more shocking, though, was the schools that he would not be able to enroll and begin his public education, which is his right at the, um, you know, under the California Constitution. And they were going to deny him that right for an unchecked race box. And so my question was, well, why is a race box so much more important than the education? And why have we as Americans arrived at this point? And, 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 and it was a long time coming, at this point that you're experiencing with your son, Jack, because you experienced it when you applied to UCLA. Yes. However, it be different between my own experience, my 40 years uh, in America, was that I always had the ability to opt out. Right. So Jack, did that application with Jack was the first time I was not able to opt out. And that shows you the growth of identity politics in America, where we are really going to 100% um, identity patients. And, and, the, and then this, this other aspect that's so unique about your film, and you point this out, I didn't really realize the numbers either, uh, the numbers until I saw the film. Uh, one in seven couples are multiracial in America. And so with the changing face of America and the people assimilating, combination of races and so forth, how do you play the identity politics game is, is one of the questions your film raises. Yes, and I believe um, the numbers are growing, are growing so fast. It's now one out of six. One out of six. In California, it's one out of like, six or one out of five. Um, in Northeast, it actually um, the least amount of interracial marriages. But it's just happening all over America. I mean, it's just growing so fast, and um, it's unstoppable. And so it's to be very hard for uh, the forces behind identity politics to, con to continue to define, uh, uh, divide us into boxes. And so that's a question that we're in, we're in this sort of a real um, paradox or a conundrum where we're trying to keep dividing the American into boxes. At the same time, we're growing more and more myths. And it's, it's got to blow up somehow. 
So why is it so important to check a box? Is it for federal or state funding, or is this just to be politically correct? Why do we have the boxes in the first place? Were you able to find out? Yeah, um, I, yeah that's, the, that's the explanation that you always get, is that they need these boxes in order to allocate resources. Um, and, you know, I, I can understand that argument. However, in Los Angeles, you know, it's almost like every 10 years, we vote at California to give money to um, the underserved minority. And 10 years later, we still have the same problem. So my thing is that these boxes are actually hurting us because we use these boxes to um, show racial disparities. We, we always blame race for why there are disparities between races. However, that stops us from going deeper into the problem into the more human level. And because we derive power from these boxes and the differences between these boxes, but do we rarely ever ask the society to go down to the human level? I mean, you know, uh, minority, um, I mean, that's why I, I, I really don't like use the term minorities or, you know, racist. I mean, we really uh, are human beings, we're all Americans, and we have different kinds of, we have similar kinds of problems. And race, uh, the skin color, is not really the best way to start addressing these problems. You uh, uh, mentioned in your film, you kind of make a comparison back to Jim Crow. Jim Crow was one sort of racist racial order. And now uh, I think it's fair that you're suggesting in your film that identity politics has become a new form of racist racial order. Yes. Um, and that was sort of because, um, you know, I was born into this state. You know, I was born black and Jewish. And, um, I never really understood why, and I never understood what the force was that I kept encountering, that kept asking me to pick a box, and why, and what was the, what was going on. And then it wasn't until recently that I realized it was identity politics, and all identity politics wanted from me was to pick my race. They really cared that I was multiracial, and I pointed out in the film that one. Um, person during when I was applying to college, I asked them, well, why do I need to reduce my multiple races into one race? And she said, diversity. So that's, <laughs> yeah. you need, do you need to be less diverse in order to advance diversity? Exactly. And so when you start thinking about these absurdities and what's going on, and um, I had no other conclusion that we're living under a new racial order. And now I'm not comparing it to uh, white supremacy or stuff like that, but it, it is a racial order that organizes just by race. And it's fighting to continue to do that in America. Now, in, in the film, you also examine, you know, headlines that were controversial, the George Zimmerman trial and the de Blasio campaign. Yes, and um, I wanted to use those as examples of how we as a society have allowed race to become a primary way of looking at our issue. I mean, um, de Blasio was last place. I mean, he was there last. And then when they made a commercial featuring his son, all of a sudden he leaped throughout the whole um, field and goes to the first place. There was nothing that de Blasio did that were on his own, they were warranted, especially. So why are we as Americans giving such prominence to that? Yeah, for, and for those who don't know or don't remember, de Blasio's son is black. Right. And, so, and you know, and he's got a big afro, and he's a really uh, gregarious, engaging kid. And so that, that did, that identified de Blasio for that race. There's no question about it. Um, I wonder, uh, Eli... In your film, you also interview individuals that are multiracial or a couple of generations of multiracial uh, parents and grandparents, and uh, they're sort of coming to the same conclusion that you are, maybe from different places. But if uh, actually multiracial families hold the promise of undoing the damage that is being done by identity politics? Um, I would probably I would not agree with that. The only reason why is I know I know we have this maybe um, 
Hispanic, the, the multiracial, will lead us to the promised land. I don't really think that they will. I think it's more uh, the individuals, how they see themselves. There are multiracials who identify um, with one side of identity politics, and there are others, like me, who don't identify with identity politics. So that's why I'm saying that identity politics, not society, is like the new racial order. It's like literally the new line that is dividing us Americans. I mean, that's what's happening in Chicago, in the, uh, in the schools in Chicago, where you either you're going to buy into identity politics or you're not going to. And you will find multiracial that buy into it and those that don't. And, so and- that's... Yeah, so I mean, so essentially, the 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 better, bigger hope is that people, uh, frankly, remember King's words about content of character, not color of skin, and focus on, and and uh, frankly, uh, not don't allow themselves to be defined solely by their skin color, which is what's being celebrated at present. Yes, and um, it, it, to me, that was fascinating because that's how I got involved with parents if um uh, who have children in Chicago schools, and it should be vaccinated to hear what they're talking about because um, it's basically an almost an indoctrination of people into skin color and into the values associated with skin color, which is what uh, other racial orders have done. They've organized us by, by skin color and the values that they associated with it. And the whole point of the civil rights movement, which my family was, um, an active member in the South Side of Chicago, which to eliminate those race boxes. And now, about 50 years later, we still have the same issue, but it kind of flipped. And my biggest problem with um, these uh, people, you should know, use the term broadly, but like people like taking Mission Tosh or these people that are coming in with concepts like white privilege and stuff like that, is. Um, as my friend uh, Gabriel, he said that these people do not see themselves as individuals. So therefore, how can they see blacks or other people as individuals? It's all about indoctrination to who think. They call it critical thinking, but it's not the true uh, old-fashioned liberal thing to critical thinking. It's the, the critical thinking that me please conform to our view of race in America. Well, if you uh, see how uh, Jack became black, you're going to do some critical thinking because it prompts a lot of uh, consideration, explores some very provocative questions. The film How Jack Became Black, How Jack Became Black.com is where you can get more information about the film. Eli Steele is the director and the documentarian who produced it. Eli, thanks so much for joining us and continued success with the film. Thank you very much for having me. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Listen to